Can you see the thing blinking? Perfect. Kia ora, this is Arun Jacob, your friendly and frank licensed New Zealand immigration advisor as well as education advisor coming live once again uh, from the beautiful city of Hamilton here in New Zealand. And if, if you guys uh, notice, I'm also coming uh, live from a different setting altogether. Normally I sit in front of this blank white wall uh, which is in my home office, but today I came to the AJV office here in uh, Victoria Street in Hamilton uh, and uh, myself and I'm accompanied by my colleague Nick uh, who is also one of our ex-students uh, uh, who finished a course in filmmaking so he's come on board to help me with this live session today and you know Nick having completed a master's in uh, filmmaking from the University of Waikato uh, uh, has been trying to flex his uh, creative muscles a bit and he's been coming up with all kinds of technology so today for the first time actually uh, we are using an external camera on the uh, on this live stream and be using some technology where if you guys look you will also have the logo of the company to the bottom left hand or right hand side of the uh, screen and then you'll also see a link to our website to the right hand side uh, and of course my name and the fact that I'm a licensed immigration advisor legally it is required that I need to show my license to you which is what I do every time I come live on uh, Facebook uh, uh, but today I forgot my wallet uh, in the card and so my wallet card is remaining there but what I managed to do very cleverly is pick up uh, the uh, license of the wall that hangs here at uh, the office and uh, here we are uh, and uh, having a good time uh, yeah I'm able to watch it now uh, yeah there it is so you can see that Nicholas is up to his tricks and uh, is able to zoom in and out with all the, the the latest uh, technology stuff that we guys are working on with and yeah it's pretty exciting to see all my young students shaping up and uh, going on to do their stuff and uh, being also becoming part of team AJB as well so right so what else did I do I introduced myself I showed my license I told you the premise of why the background looks different today and some of the um, interesting technology we are using today so and the only other difference is that uh, like Every week, unfortunately, I'm not able to go live on YouTube, so today it is just Facebook, so I'm actually coming live on our uh, official AJV Global uh, Facebook page, uh, but I believe my team, my wonderful team, who is always lurking in the background on Skype, uh, has uh, shared it to uh, the Facebook group uh, called NZ Options, where a lot of you ask us quite uh, detailed questions about uh, moving to New Zealand, and it's also being shared to my personal uh, Facebook feed. So hey look, warm welcome everybody and sorry guys uh, on YouTube and uh, Instagram that we couldn't do it today but uh, we, you know, we will try and figure out this technology so that's the uh, next uh, task for next week to ensure that he's able to live stream uh, like how I used to live stream before uh, on YouTube and Facebook simultaneously and I will always uh, also use my trusty uh, uh, mobile phone to go live on Instagram as well but today because we are experimenting with it more have too many variations so it's just Facebook for today but hey look Facebook works like a charm for us so quite happy to go ahead and do that so as always my wonderful team uh, is supporting me and uh, you can uh, just click on that website at the bottom of the screen uh, right now uh, and that will take you straight to the uh, AJV uh, global website um, and if you click on team you will see all the people who work for uh, AJV global and it's an amazing team even if I'm saying it myself but I truly and honestly believe that it is one of the most uh, professional and well put together teams to promote New Zealand uh, internationally to uh, deserving and high quality clients who would like to either come and study here or come and study and settle here or just come directly on skill migration or you know uh, seek other opportunities like investment business uh, so on and so forth. So we are here to serve you. So do click and take, uh, you know, uh, click on that website at the bottom of your screen and uh, give us feedback and let us know if uh, uh, all this new technology is working. If it is not, I might just go right back to my good old uh, uh, camera on the uh, on the laptop and you know make it a lot simpler. But hey, look, you know, uh, in a, today we are, you know, uh, AJV is not a terribly large company yet. 
but we are a bit like New Zealand. We are small, but we are very innovative, and we want to keep trying out new stuff, you know, where it's exciting because we work with a very young group of people, you know, all our clients are very young, uh, you know, uh, people, and we want it to be exciting for you. We don't want to be some fuddy-duddy, suit-wearing, uh, you know, immigration advisor sitting in the corner of some office somewhere, and, you know, not in connect. We want to be with you. We want to work with you guys, and uh, work with you guys and create, keep doing all this innovative stuff. So I, I bet that we are the most innovative uh, uh, company promoting New Zealand at this moment. So uh, all of you planning to come here, you don't have to look beyond HIV. So what I'm going to ask uh, Nick is to, Nick, while we are anywhere, we, since we are doing some fancy stuff, you want to do a quick pan off to show a little bit of the office. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there it is. Uh, if you can zoom in onto that wooden box there, now that one that you just, yeah. So that's uh, actually um, uh, you know a uh, gift that we received uh, from one of our two of our uh, uh, you know clients called Neha and Vijay uh, who came to New Zealand as students and then found uh, fantastic jobs uh, and moved on to get their residency. So we did the whole thing inside that wooden box was actually a very good uh, a bottle of wine. <laughs> so and uh, right on top of that box uh, was if you look at the black cap uh, which is a very typical Nepali cap, yeah, that one there. That's also been uh, a gift to us from one of our wonderful Nepali clients. So that's the other thing. So we are not catering only to, uh, you know, clients from India, but we're catering to a very huge uh, multinational kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, clienting at the moment. Yeah, if you just uh, pan around a bit more uh, uh, and go onto our wall there and uh, you'll see a blank right on top there, but uh, that's where my, but that is the license for Mary Joseph, who is my colleague and senior manager and who sits here and uh, she is the overall manager here for the Hamilton office and some of the certificates of representation that runs from uh, University of Waikato and yeah, if you zoom out there are some more certificates about all our different memberships and if you just spend a bit more and show a bit of the street outside there, there you are, uh, that's the streets of, uh, and if you see, uh, if you saw a uh, Sexy car outside on the road there. That's my park decor. <laughs> Stop it, Nicky. Right, I was doing all that. <laughs> so, but yeah, that, that's where we are, guys. So we are based in uh, uh, the city of Hamilton, and uh, we are uh, right on the uh, main road here in Hamilton. It's called Victoria Street, and yeah, it's been working very well for us because, you know, uh, Mary and Virginia and Nick also comes and works here, and Anjana, who is also currently our student, Nick is an ex-student, but uh, Anjana is still doing a, a postgraduate course in marketing, so she has come on board as well. She's working part-time, hopefully we'll go on to work full-time just like Nick, but hey, look, we guys are walking the talk and helping our students to get into their careers and keep moving forward. All right, that was a really, really long introduction, but I'm, I'm a little excited. I'm like a, a boy with a toy because we're trying out all this new technology and I guess boys and toys will always, uh, you know, get the excitement level up a little bit. All right, first question is from Deepak Sharma who says, just wanted to know whether my experience in India and Oman will be counted for immigrant applications. All right, uh, uh, Deepak, uh, okay, so uh, Deepak Sharma's question, yeah, absolutely Deepak, there is no reason why uh, your experience in India and Oman will not will not be counted because uh, there are certain uh, rules uh, within uh, the uh, immigration law of New Zealand where your experience can be counted. Although there is another interesting uh, twist to this whole immigration uh, thing, where uh, there are certain countries called uh, comparable labor markets uh, to New Zealand. So if you have worked there, then of course you're eligible to. Uh, show your experience uh, towards uh, immigration applications, but if I mean obviously it's at the resident visa application or the work visa level only we're talking about. But otherwise, uh, uh, also if you're not from one of the um, the comparable labor market countries, there is a way and means of being able to show your uh, uh, experience uh, and make it count towards your resident visa application or your work visa application. So yeah. Absolutely, Deepak. And so what I would like you to do is get in touch with us because as I keep saying in each and every one of my uh, live sessions and videos and everywhere else, you know, a lot of you uh, take uh, the immigration process for granted and you think it is uh, just a simple uh, uh, thing to do. As 
you know, uh, put in some uh, details online and upload some documents and you think, voila, it's all going to come and fall into your lap. It's not as simple as that, guys. So whether it is for the simplest of uh, visa applications, it could be quite a tricky uh, process. And that is exactly why the government created uh, people like us called licensed immigration advisors, because uh, even the government knows that uh, uh, this is not a simple process, and uh, which is why they, you know, people like me and my colleagues, uh, Mary and Tulika, these are the other two licensed advisors uh, in the company, and one more of our colleague called Navya, uh, who is an ex-immigration officer, has just come on, you know, has also applied for her license, and that's the reason we are people like us, you know, uh, well versed with immigration law and uh, and experience to be able to provide the right guidance. So, Deepak, yeah, to to cut a long story short, yes, you will be able to uh, get um, use your experience in India and Oman, although I think both are not comparable labor markets uh, in uh, uh, to New Zealand, but in, under certain circumstances, uh, that particular experience can be counted. I'll not get into the details of it now. Get in touch with us uh, because this is the first time I'm doing this uh, session from the new office. I forgot to get my, uh, you know, my, my board, which I hold up normally and uh, say, hey, look, this is the where you guys can uh, contact us. Uh, but so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just uh, tell you the contact details or, you know, even better, let's make it cool. Uh, click on that website at the bottom of the screen and go and click on the contact us page and you will be able to see how we can get in touch with uh, HAV uh, Global. All right, guys, all some moving on. Okay. My team saying that uh, this particular setup is good, look good, uh, looking really good. So thanks, guys. I had to do some, uh, introduce some new technology to beat all the new uh, competition I'm getting from our own team. So it was about time I had to innovate and make this better and get my you know following back and my fans back. So game on, people. Game on. <laughs> right. Next one is uh, Awais Nasser. Um, how many days does it take to get New Zealand study visa? Okay, so always, although the uh, Immigration Department of New Zealand uh, lays out certain uh, norms on its website and says these are the normal uh, uh, processing time frames for uh, temporary visas or permanent visas and so on and so forth, uh, it can vary quite dramatically. And so I would think, you know, you got to uh, prep yourself uh, well enough and my recommendation is to lodge the application as early as possible maybe two or uh, three months before the start date of your course uh, because if at all your application is picked up and there are certain verifications that need to be done then it could uh, get uh, uh, into it could go into a bit of a longish loop so I would recommend to lodge it as early as possible but sometimes uh, uh, applications are also being decided in about a week to 10 days time so there is really no set pattern as such but I think a lot of factors go into the picture as to from which country you are what kind of an immigration history you have who is the agency that is filing on your behalf for instance because for uh, you know as a company we at AJV absolutely absolutely ensure that uh, we're doing exactly the same work as what the immigration department of New Zealand is doing which is to uh, pick and choose the best talent possible to be able to come into New Zealand with no adverse background in terms of health or character uh, so on and, or, or in their funds and stuff. So, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, Immigration New Zealand also uh, uh, understands and uh, sees this trend of good companies that are launching good applications and possibly we will, I'm not saying we do, I'm just thinking uh, that any uh, sensible organization will say, Okay, these guys are working in tandem with our own objectives, so you know maybe we can fast track their application. So possibly you will get a bit of uh, uh, advantage if you work with a good organized company like uh, um, AJV uh, Services. Uh, we are also recognized by Education New Zealand, uh, which is a government uh, department here in New Zealand. So we are a recognized agency. If you can, actually, you know, we have that. Uh, if you go to that green and white. Uh, certificate there Nick uh, you will actually be able to see that uh, yeah that one there that is our official recognition guys and girls that uh, we are recognized by the government of New Zealand so we are called an education New Zealand recognized uh, agency uh, yeah and you know it's, we ju I just got intimation now by the way on my email from ENZ that uh, it's being renewed again so we are 
very happy about it. So yeah, there are various factors away, and uh, one of the factors is also which company is launching your application and how well it has been uh, put forward. All right, guys. Cool. Let's go on. I'm quite liking this, although the office is a bit warm, but it's pretty uh, cool. <laughs> Ankit Vagela, one of our uh, students uh, who I just met. Uh, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you guys, I was on this amazing road trip with my colleagues, uh, uh, Nick, uh, who is behind the camera, and also with uh, Anjana, who is not here today. But uh, uh, So Anjana and Nick and I, we went on this amazing road trip to... Uh, go and meet our students, our AGV students uh, uh, here in New Zealand in two cities like, called Wellington and Nelson. So we first met our clients in Wellington and had an amazing time and we uh, had some of the old timers uh, who have now moved on into good jobs and residency and are on the verge of buying their homes and stuff. And there were some who came, just arrived a week before. So it was a beautiful gathering. So we had a, you know, beautiful restaurant and we had an exclusive zone to ourselves and we bought them lots of good food to eat and uh, good banter, good friendships. There were some fantastic connections that were, that were made. Uh, one guy who uh, is doing a course in 3D, uh, 3D animation actually managed to meet one more of our senior AJV students called Sagar, uh, who not only finished the 3D animation in New Zealand, but is now working with probably one of the best uh, uh, you know, uh, creative companies in the world called Veta Digital, which is based in Wellington. So uh, uh, Aditya, who is the young uh, student who was doing his 3D animation, was absolutely stoked. You know, he was so overjoyed to meet Sagar, who is working in Veta, because for all this uh, fresh young uh, 3D animators, like Veta Digital is like, you know, it's like the ultimate uh, goal of their life. So uh, he, he, it was like, for him, it was like, you know, being in a holy place and meeting a holy man kind of thing. And interestingly, Sagar's wife, who has also uh, come to New Zealand, uh, she's got a background in you know, environmental sciences. And one more of our uh, students who was there, his wife uh, works for the uh, government uh, department of New Zealand, which deals with environment. So it was there were all kinds of interesting connections were being made. And uh, of course, there was lots of laughter and banter and you know, catch up. So and then from after Wellington, we guys drove to Nelson. And for that, we had to do a ferry crossing. So we drove the car onto the uh, ship and then that took us over to the South Island and then we drove for a couple of hours to me uh, to uh, arrive at a city called Nelson. Again, we had a fantastic uh, get together and Nick and uh, Anjana have put together some uh, great footage of all these events and I bet they're gonna uh, edit and uh, uh, you know come out with those films very soon. But in the meantime, if you wanna check out some of these uh, uh, things, uh, photographs uh, of our trip and everything, just go to uh, Facebook and check out our AJV Global uh, page or our group called NZ Options. All right, guys. Cool. Thanks, Ankit, for saying this is looking sophisticated. We're putting some proper brains behind it, mate. So, <laughs> okay. Kevin Alexander Roche asked, "Hi, I'm an AJV client. Hi, Kevin. What a smart young man you are, mate. What a smart, smart young man." Can you elaborate more about the difference between thesis research taught, uh, what would be resourceful in New Zealand, uh, and worldwide career-wise? Would need your advice around this. Okay, Kevin, uh, there there isn't a terribly lot of uh, difference to be honest, except that you know the uh, thesis and research one has a very strong research component. The big advantage for uh, students who are doing. Uh, Masters by research is the fact that you get full-time uh, work rights, so uh, which means that you're pretty much uh, uh, studying on your own because all you will have is a supervisor, but you're pretty much just uh, working on your own and putting your research and you know which will eventually then become into a thesis which you present to your uh, professor and other uh, people who will evaluate it. So. That's one of the main advantages. And I, my own understanding, I could be wrong with this, but I think those who are aspiring to eventually go on to do a PhD uh, or, uh, you know, uh, probably end up being in the academic, as an academician, perhaps would opt to choose the uh, thesis route, whereas the other people would, by and large, opt to go for a taught uh, kind of a course because, uh, <clears throat> sorry guys, so because in the taught you actually have a tutor. Uh, who is uh, there to guide you through the entire course and stuff like that. So yeah, I think uh, that is one of the biggest advantages. But 
by and large, uh, if you are looking at doing a full-time job and uh, be able to research on your own, uh, then yeah, I think a thesis, uh, by, you know, by, uh, a master's by research is good, but <coughs> sorry people, as always, my cough flares up. Too much of talking. But otherwise, uh, <clears throat> Kevin, I think uh, you should be all right to go for a thought course as well. Have a chat with your uh, AJV advisor and we will get more details as to your future aspirations because we are not people who recommend something just for the heck of recommending it. We would like to know what is it that you want to do. For instance, Nicholas was actually shooting this whole thing right now. He came to us because he has a strong aspiration to go on to become a filmmaker in future and so unlike a lot of other agencies which don't put uh, you know effort into understanding what is the future aspirations we just didn't blindly suggest in fact it tells us that he you know came to <clears throat> AJB after he was already talking to somebody else you know some other agency and they were for some vague reason insisting that he go for a business course but when he came to us we said no this young man is absolutely got the talent he already had a beautiful portfolio worked for one of the best TV companies in the world and we said that's where he belongs so that's what we did and he's now finished and he's working full time for us now which is a phenomenal you know closing of the loop for us as far as we are concerned but likewise Kevin for you as well we would like to understand what exactly your aspirations for instance if you end up uh, if you intend to end up becoming a lecturer for instance and you know seeing yourself as an academician or a future researcher going on to do a PhD then most definitely you need to opt for your masters by researcher your, as well but if you're saying, hey, look, I just want to go for a master's, get done with it, get out and get my post-study work visa, find a relevant job and then go on to, uh, you know, uh, get your residency into place, then probably a thought uh, is the best option. But uh, don't get uh, pulled in or sucked in by this, uh, this greed of thinking, oh, but I can work full time if I do a master's by research because it can cut both ways if you're working so long uh, and not able to focus on your masters then you might end up failing the course which means that none of your future plans will fructify so you guys uh, and girls will need to understand that doing a masters in New Zealand is not easy it is going to be a tough challenge so you need to be very very committed to that so so don't come with the aspiration of oh if I do a read by, by research I can work full time because it will be very tough for you to manage all right uh, Kevin so continue to speak to your AGB advisor and we will take it forward from that <clears throat> All right, let me check to see what my wonderful team is saying. They're saying super high definition, uh, one of mine. <laughs> right, and then. Uh... Okay, okay, next question is from Shrestha Ayub, and he says, How is the course early childcare in New Zealand, level 7? Can you say stuffs uh, related to it? I wonder what stuff. But I did my uh, bachelor in social work. Can I do childcare diploma level seven in New Zealand? What are my chances? Okay. Hi, Shrestha. <clears throat> yeah, man. Uh, possibly there is a bit of an overlap between what you've done before and what you're intending to do in New Zealand. So yeah, possibly there is a, a, a bit of an overlap and you, I think you would, could be considered quite seriously for a course like that. But there are also some interesting courses which are related to your background as uh, 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 who's already got a bachelor's in uh, social work. So that's something that also you might want to consider. Uh, because I don't know why you're opting for child care diploma because obviously it's not something you've done before. It looks like somebody has suggested it to you and that's the reason you're asking us just bear in mind that while there is a slight bit of overlap between your uh, child care uh, diploma <clears throat> which you intend to do and your ba uh, background as a bachelor in social work you probably will be better off sticking to social work uh, because you know child care diploma is a, it's, it's different uh, in terms of uh, I think it requires a different set of skills uh, and understanding and knowledge of this entire industry so you might want to be a bit careful about jumping into it. I have a feeling some agencies are suggesting it to you and that's because why a lot of uh, agencies suggest particular courses only is because uh, these guys will have only four or five 
institutions from New Zealand on their portfolio. And so unless and until they send students to one of these four or five uh, uh, institutions, they will not earn their commission. So what they will do is they'll try very, very hard to try and fit you into one of the three or four institutions that uh, they work with. Uh, for instance, if you click on the website at the bottom of the your screen right now of AJV Global, and if you're able to, uh, in fact, I'd like my team to click and let me know if it is actually uh, <clears throat> working um, uh, quite well, uh, so that you know we can use this going forward as well. But yeah, be careful about what agents suggest because agents don't have your interest at at heart. They have uh, their interest at heart. So a guy like you, who is probably meant to end up in social work, might end up in childcare, and you may not like it at all. So I'd say have a chat with connect with uh, team AJV. Click on the website at the bottom of the screen and go to the contact page and uh, give us a call or send us an email or on Facebook or wherever and we would like to speak to you and find out what is exactly your future uh, aspiration. Like I was just mentioning, you know, uh, uh, the, the reason uh, Nick today is a filmmaker is because he came to us. But if he had succumbed to the advice of that uh, that very unprofessional advice, you know, uh, agent who was trying to push him into business, the poor guy probably would have. Uh, being a little lost and not be looking like the cool dude behind the camera as he's looking right now. Uh, you might want to just show your face first, right? Yeah, come, come, in, because I've been saying Nick, Nick throughout the... There's our man, there's our cameraman hey, for the... <laughs> there's our cameraman for the day, our, our big video professional right here. One of our very proud AJV students and now uh, working with AJV, so and it can't get better than that. Okay, back to your position. <laughs> get back. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Okay, okay. Rahul Praveen. Okay, my team has. Uh, okay, next one is uh, Neha. My colleague has given me a little rap on the knuckle and said I'm. I'm not. I haven't spoken yet about the latest news which came in today about the partnership visas. Yes, Neha. Sorry, I forgot. Uh, I just got very excited with all this new technology and stuff like that. But. Yep, jokes apart, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there was a very important announcement today from the Prime Minister of New Zealand because one of the burning issues uh, in the last few weeks here in New Zealand as regards the immigration process is concerned is the fact that uh, uh, the uh, Immigration Department of New Zealand or INZ, uh, INZ as they are called uh, have become very, very strict in processing uh, partnership visa applications. Uh, where you know it's a partnership made out of marriage or or a de facto partnership where they've lived long enough together uh, to be considered to be in a, a real partnership. So <clears throat> what the Immigration Department of New Zealand decided was that they're gonna stick to the rule book verbatim, uh, go word by word practically, and they said unless and until you are in a real relationship and unless and until you have been living together for 12 months, we will not consider you as partners. Now, obviously, that created a lot of problem uh, for people from countries like India and some other countries, <clears throat> predominantly from South and Southeast Asia, where marriages are a bit more traditional. Uh, and in many instances, uh, these marriages are arranged marriages. Uh, and people who come to New Zealand, let's say, to study, uh, they finish their studies and get into the post-study work visa and find a good job, and then they go back home and get married. Uh, and then they want to bring their partner uh, across to New Zealand. But what happened was, because of this traditional way of getting married, uh, it was clashing with what was there in the immigration law of New Zealand, which said that not only should you be you know, in a legitimate relationship, but you should also have been living together for 12 months. So obviously that created a bit of a catch-22 situation because uh, most of these uh, you know, people uh, who get married are in traditional marriages and they don't, actually live with this person, they just get married and want to get the spouse along. So their only option was to <clears throat> either go back and live with this person for 12 months and then come back again saying that, okay, look, we lived for 12 months together and here's all the proof or, you know, kind of. So it was uh, quite messy, to be honest. And then there was a bit of a, you know, a verbal joust happening between one of the cabinet ministers and uh, some of the uh, members of the Indian community and it got, all got a little ugly and so eventually it reached the Prime Minister's uh, office as well and today uh, Jacinda Ardern who is our Prime Minister here in New Zealand uh, so she made uh, an announcement and I shared it already on our Facebook uh, uh, group and page and 
also on my personal Facebook uh, ID as well, where she has said that they are instructing Immigration New Zealand, uh, the department, uh, to revert back to the status quo as it was before and take into consideration that uh, the traditional marriages may not necessarily adhere to the exact wedding as per the immigration law of New Zealand. So that I think is very welcome news and I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of relieved people out there because you know they, they do get married to be able to <clears throat> live with their partners and bring them over and you know that sort of thing and sometimes as I said in traditional marriages that whole uh, 12 months living together does not happen. So the Prime Minister even went on to say that it was actually not a cabinet decision but it was actually a decision made by certain officials within the Immigration Department of New Zealand. So I bet they're going to review this whole thing and I think it's a very proactive government and which is what I like about New Zealand because you know I live here and I you know promote New Zealand uh, so passionately because I strongly strongly believe that it's a very fair society that's a very fair government and Immigration New Zealand is also a fair department we are all human we can make a mistake once in a while and uh, so I guess that's what happened but you know very quickly uh, it reached the Prime Minister's office and the Prime Minister uh, said okay no we're going to review this entire thing and she has very graciously and kindly said that it's going to be reverting back to the status quo as before. So all's good uh, in the hood, as they say here in New Zealand, guys. So, you know, you guys should uh, and girls should be able to bring your beloveds, uh, unless certainly you're enjoying your singlehood here in New Zealand. Well, that's another story altogether. <laughs> okay, but good news, good news. So don't, don't get uh, New Zealand off your charts. Please, please. Come to New Zealand, you can't find a better place and you can now bring your, you know, dear partner along as well without much of a hassle, okay? <clears throat> All right, there's a question from Blessing City who says, Hi Arun, what are the possibilities for university level teachers in New Zealand? I'm a PhD in linguistics with eight years of experience. How should I move forward? I'm 39 and is currently in India and Blessin has shared his uh, uh, email address. All right, Blessin. Uh, hey, look, uh, fantastic background uh, in the first instance. I think it's a great background that you have. And uh, yeah, you'll probably, you know, uh, be considered pretty uh, high up uh, for a position here in New Zealand uh, in a university which has got a good strong linguistics department. Um, how should you move forward? So one of the common uh, things or you know pieces of information I reiterate all the time, Blessing, is that it is almost impossible uh, to find a job directly in New Zealand when you're not present in the country. Uh, so you know, you might, and because, again, it's a bit of a cash 22 chicken, uh, you know, uh, situation or a chicken and egg situation where uh, an, and a particular institution may like your uh, profile, but they cannot give you a, but they'll say, hey, look, we'll give you a job offer if you have a work visa. Uh, but you can't get a work visa unless until they give a job offer. So it becomes that what comes first, the chicken or egg kind of a conundrum is uh, what develops. So which is where, uh, and the reason a lot of, uh, you know, employers, whether it is an institution or other employers in New Zealand, uh, normally do not uh, encourage wanting to give uh, <clears throat> a job offer to somebody who is not in the country is because they do not understand immigration processes and they don't want to go through the uh, trouble of giving a job offer to somebody and then not being sure whether that person can, and can actually make it to New Zealand or not. So that is the simple uh, aspect. And the other thing is that there's already a good supply of fantastic talent here in New Zealand already. Not only our own local uh, Kiwis uh, and young New Zealanders are coming out of universities and seeking good opportunities and polytechnics and seeking good opportunities but there's a massive uh, amount of uh, uh, high quality skilled migrants who come in as well uh, and then there is of course this big cohort of uh, very high quality international students who complete their course and then get a three years post study work visa so they're in the job market as well and that's the reason a lot of employers are not very keen to uh, consider anybody who's not present in New Zealand they'd rather go with any one of those other people who are uh, immediately available in New Zealand for a quick telephone chat or a face-to-face -face interview and that sort of thing. Blessing. So, which is where, and uh, direct skill migration is also ruled out in most instances, uh, unless until there's a very, very particular uh, combination of uh, uh, factors. But even if those factors are all in place, 
uh, one of the conditions you've got to meet is that you need to have uh, an offer of employment in New Zealand or actually be employed in New Zealand or you should have studied here for at least two years and uh, qualified with a master's or a PhD. So when you look at all this, uh, you know, either getting a job directly in New Zealand or getting direct skill migration to New Zealand is, is kind of quite a tough task, which is where as an organization, AGB, we, uh, we, we suggest uh, uh, that you make an investment of your money, time and effort and come into uh, New Zealand and uh, undertake a course here. You know, if you can come and do, you already have a PhD, perhaps you could uh, consider doing a one-year master's by uh, thesis or one-year master's, taught master's or whatever. And once you finish that course, you would actually be able to get a uh, three years post-study work with and then you will enter the job market here in New Zealand as well. And the money you put towards your, uh, uh, you know, your course and uh, your living expenses, you would be able to earn back because you'll be allowed to work part-time uh, while you're studying. And if you're married, which I'm thinking you would be uh, at 39, but no, not that I'm presuming anything, but I'm thinking by and large you should be married. Uh, if you are coming for a master's, your wife would also get a full-time, uh, uh, you know, work visa. So she can be working full time and you can be working part time and whatever investment you make can be recovered and then after you complete your course you can get a three years post study work visa and uh, so essentially you will have four years in New Zealand to prove your worth and with the kind of background that you mentioned I do believe that you will crack something or the other and once you crack that and you have that job in New Zealand ticked then of course you can apply for your skill migration so that's the way we recommend a pathway and you know as a full-fledged end-to-end migration company, you know, AGV, we guys uh, uh, will advise you throughout your journey. That's the reason we have this uh, wonderful, beautiful office staff by people. We're going to uh, set up more offices across in Auckland uh, and Wellington and Christchurch, definitely. That that was the uh, most recent discussion I had with my local staff here. So we are planning to, so that we can stand by you throughout your entire journey. So you guys will have to, and uh, you know, girls will have to make take the decision of uh, of in making that investment and and taking that leap of faith of coming into New Zealand as an international student, get into the right course, and we are there to make sure that you're getting into the right course, and they will hold your hand and walk with you throughout your entire journey. About you know after you finish your course, your post study work visa, do some networking for you, hopefully help you to get into the right job, and once you get there, then we can advise you about applying for skill migration, so on and so forth. So it's quite simple. Uh, It'll look difficult sitting uh, from the outside, but you know it's it's just about taking that leap of faith. And you know a lot of people are fearful of taking that leap of faith because they're very comfortable in wherever they are, and they're like, oh, should I let go of all this? But what you lose out is the opportunity in this lifetime to live in one of the best uh, countries on earth, not only by yourself but with your family. And this is absolutely one of the most amazing places on earth to bring up a family. So yeah, don't miss out on that opportunity, guys, you know, and just give us a call. Click on the website at the bottom of your screen right now and uh, go to the contact us page and get in touch with us. And it's all free. You know, we don't, uh, we don't charge you to speak to us and get some good information. I promise you good, honest, authentic information because we are licensed advisors uh, and also a bunch of other uh, very uh, strong uh, professionals who are in the team. So I promise you we'll give our most honest advice. We call ourselves the friendly and frank licensed advisors uh, for New Zealand. Uh, so please uh, do not hesitate to pick up the phone or send us an email. We will uh, give you the best information possible. And then based on that, uh, you guys can you know uh, can take a call whether you really want to do it or not. If you do it, great. We'll support you throughout the journey. If you can't do it, not a problem. We will remain friends. Continue to watch our live uh, sessions and the rest of our beautiful videos uh, and share it with your family and friends. All right, cool. Next one, how are we doing on time? I still have 20 minutes for okay, and my throat is behaving as well. It's remaining okay. That's what happens when you stop smoking. So, <clears throat> Payal Basu, hello Arun, this is Payal. Hope you are doing good, very well, Payal. Thank you for asking. And yourself, had a question on the timelines after allocation of files for partnership visa. Would you be able to throw some light on what could be the maximum possible time a case officer can take after the partnership file is allocated to them. We have been waiting for more than two weeks after allocation it has been with Mumbai office. Thanks. Uh, hey, Payal, again, like I said, uh, although Immigration New Zealand does uh, 
publish certain timelines on its website. Uh, it, it varies from case to case. It depends on the complications uh, that may arise or may not arise. Sometimes there are some, uh, for instance, one of the most critical documents uh, could be the medical report that is submitted by the final doctor who has uh, uh, done the uh, medical uh, examination and sometimes they flag something uh, which they find it as uh, not, uh, you know, uh, for ordinary people like us, for lay people like us, we might say, hey, look, but I'm in the best of my health. But, you know, doctors will pick up something, you know, a, a high count of something or the other and say maybe this requires some further investigation and that is when they refer that case to somebody called the medical assessor here in New Zealand and it comes to Wellington and so we don't know I mean so at this stage uh, all I can tell you Pyle is no news is good news uh, because if, if there is no news from the assessing officer it means that <clears throat> it is progressing smoothly and there are no big queries coming up so and they are saying that you know there is a big backlog of uh, applications be happy that it has been allocated because allocated means that uh, work is happening on that case and it's not just sitting in a pile somewhere on somebody's desk. So I think uh, maybe we need to wait another two to four weeks time and hopefully, I'm, I'm quite certain that there will be an outcome. But uh, if you have applied through um, AJV, <coughs> please ask your uh, advisor uh, to, you know, send a probe once every 10 or 15 days. We don't like to ping too often because, you know, these officers are also, uh, you know, human beings like the rest of us and they also have a limited amount of time and patience to work with so we don't like to ping them too often uh, I, but if it is something of a concern they will let us know and we will fight it but in the meantime all i can tell you pile is please be patient uh, enjoy yourself in new zealand it's only a matter of time before your partner comes and meets you meets up with you again all right thanks pile okay okay <clears throat> Right, Prashant Chauhan. My interview was on 2nd November. I'm not sure if Prashant is one of our clients. Hopefully he is. Uh, I know approximate time to get uh, AIP or results. Hello, sir. My interview uh, was on 2nd November. It was good. May I know approximately time of getting result or AIP? Uh, hey, Prashant, if your interview was already done, I mean, more than likely in the next couple of weeks, you should uh, have uh, some kind of uh, an outcome. Uh, and if you have applied through AGV, unfortunately, I can't know right now whether, you know, uh, you're an AGV client or not. But if you have applied through AGV, please check with your, with your uh, officer, case officer, and uh, he, he or she will, excuse me, send a probe and check to see uh, whether uh, there is any progress. But, yeah, I, it shouldn't be too long from now. All right? Cool. <clears throat> Ramandeep saying, hello, sir, I'm an AGV client. Well done, Raman. What a smart, smart person you are. <laughs> I have received an awful letter from AUT and I am waiting for an awful letter from UC, which is University of Canterbury, for those of you who don't know. I have applied for Masters in Construction Management in both the universities. Fantastic. I was tilted towards UC since it's outside Auckland, uh, keeping PR rules in mind. I have to apply for a loan as well and I am aiming for Feb 2020 intake. What should be my next step? Should I go with AUT or should I wait a little longer? Okay. Good question, uh, Raman, because <clears throat> there is pretty substantial uh, building, uh, uh, you know, activity happening in Christchurch as well as in Auckland or even in Hamilton for that matter. So you're probably good to look at all these uh, different options. I would say because you're looking at a Feb 2020 intake, you would be good, uh, you would be absolutely fine even if you... Uh, uh, you know, launch your uh, student visa application by the end of this month. So, I'd say hang it there and wait to get till the uh, University of Canterbury offer as well. Uh, and you are, uh, I, I, I appreciate the, the research you've done and you you are stating that it's a definitely advantage just to get a job outside uh, Auckland after you complete your course. Well done. I'm very proud of the fact that you've done your research and you're again a good example of the kind of quality of students we work with. Well done, very proud of you. But I'd say hang on there, hang in there for a couple of weeks more and wait for your uh, University of Canterbury uh, offer as well. Compare both, <clears throat> take a look at, by and large they should be similar, but take a look at the papers and 
there might be one or two things that uh, will uh, kind of stand out here. But really, it doesn't matter when you have both the offers. Uh, I think it's eventually the papers that should define where you're going, because it doesn't matter whether you're going to AUT or to uh, University of Canterbury, although, like I said, you will get the advantage of the extra points in Christchurch when you do find a job, which is definitely an advantage. But again, AUT is equally good as well, and if you get a job in Auckland, and I, I do believe you will be able to crack it, because by and large, most of our students who have come for this course are, are doing pretty well, uh, and most of them have translated and moved on into jobs, and some of them have got the residency as well, and we'll be happy to connect you to some of them, Raman, once you come here. So, uh, my advice, uh, wait to get the uh, University of Canterbury offer as well. Take a look at both the papers and both the courses, and then decide and choose which one you want to go to. All right? Cool. For us, we are happy to send you to either one, because they're both very good universities. All right? Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill says, hey Arun, the new tech you used looks fab, very clear and really spruced up. Congratulations. Just for the heck of it, zoom in and out somewhere, <laughs> Nick, you know, just to show off a little bit with our new technology. <laughs> <laughs> now you see me, guys are going really preserved with this. Nick and I have been like boys with toys the whole of this evening today, and yeah, it's working well. Nick, by the way, is also my uh, fitness trainer. He's put me on a serious diet, so I'm a little cranky because I've been off the booze and uh, uh, and the sugar and the carbs for uh, 48 hours now, so I'm, uh, I just want to you know, pick up a beer and quickly chug it down. <laughs> <clears throat> Shamal Parekh wants to know why the today's uh, stream is good. Because we are using some new technology, Shamal, and we're using an external Panasonic 4K camera with Leica lens. That's why. <laughs> right. Um, Kevin Alexander Roche comes back and asks AJV client here, uh, Lincoln, Otago, AUT. What do you suggest in terms of teaching staff and ease of completing the course? Okay. So if you are already looking at ease of completing the course, uh, Kevin, definitely don't look at the uh, my research because you know that's pretty much all your own work. But hey, look, they're all great universities, uh, uh, fantastic universities, uh, all three of uh, Lincoln, Otago, and AUT. My suggestion is if you want to experience real New Zealand, get out of Auckland because uh, you know uh, the essence of New Zealand is felt a little in the smaller cities. Then in Auckland, Auckland is like a very good city, it's beautiful, I don't want to take anything away from it, but it's like any big city anywhere in the world, you know, you could be in Auckland or you could be in Melbourne or you could be in Chicago or, you know, wherever, but when you go to smaller towns like Dunedin where Otago is or Lincoln, uh, where Lincoln is, you feel you kind of truly smell New Zealand and then of course there's that added advantage of getting extra points towards your residency if you uh, eventually find a job outside Auckland. So, you know, or keeping all this in mind, I'd say either one would be good. Uh, we uh, equally endorse AUT as well. That's a fantastic university and a lot of our students uh, who have studied there have come out with uh, very good um, uh, outcomes and have gone on to establish themselves very well in New Zealand. So, yeah, I'd say any one of them is good. And, you know, because it's for, for me, it's always difficult to pick and choose between all these good universities, I'd say Always look at the papers in each of these courses and see which appeals to you more because while by and large they will be similar, there will be certain uh, there are subtle differences and certain papers might appeal to you a bit more. For instance, I will always, always do uh, <clears throat> a course in business with a strong element of marketing and digital marketing because that is my uh, uh, interest. So if there are uh, two masters I'm looking at in business and one has got more papers and a bit of a more focus on uh, marketing and digital marketing, that will be my first choice. So I'd say uh, always look at the papers, but otherwise we equally endorse uh, AUT and Lincoln and Otago universities. I think all three of them are fabulous. All right, cool. <clears throat> right, so there's a very interesting one called Henok uh, Gabeau, I hope I pronounced that right, says, Hello Arun, I'm Henok from Ethiopia. Oh, hello, that's the first time we've had somebody come on these live sessions from Ethiopia, Africa. Hope you're doing well in your part of the world, uh, Henok, and thanks for coming uh, 
and asking questions in this uh, live stream. Uh, I have more than five years of experience in civil engineering work. Now I'm getting my project management professional, PMP. Uh, and uh, am I eligible for Silver Fern job search visa? And what's my success rate for this visa? Uh, Henok, I don't think you would be eligible. Uh, yeah, probably you would be actually. But they are on the verge of kind of, you know, uh, removing the Silver Fern category altogether. Uh, this was an announcement which was also made recently where they are kind of trying to uh, club pretty much all these different types of work visas into one particular work visa. So I think the Silver Fern is actually on the way out already. Uh, so, so it may not be the right thing to consider at this point. What I suggest is email your CV uh, to immigrationadvisor at hvglobal.com. Uh, if you're married, also email your uh, spouse's CV and uh, one of us, one of the licensed advisors, and we have three of us right now, and one more is on the verge of getting a license as well. Uh, we'll take a look and you know, assess to see if there are other possibilities for you. So, Henok, I'd say just email your CV uh, to immigrationadvisor at ajvglobal.com and we'll take it forward from there. All right, thank you. All right, anything uh, guys that uh, I'll need to, and that says to my my wonderful team uh, who back me up all the time. Tell me if I miss anybody, especially any of our AJB clients and students who are wanting to have some. Uh, this looks pretty cool, eh? I mean, I quite like this whole thing actually. And uh, hey guys, can you tell me if that click on the website is working? Oh, you don't have to zoom in next just because I say this looks cool. <laughs> Now, I'd like my team to tell me if that clicking on that website, the, the logo looks pretty cool on the, oh, it's not working, is it? The click on the website, so we'll have to uh, do some more tinkering with the technology. Okay, cool. Well, at least the, the uh, picture is coming on the website, so yeah. Something is working. <laughs> Mevan Fernando, I'm thinking my friend Mevan Fernando would be from Sri Lanka. Uh, I'm planning to come with my wife, please. You married her to take her along with you, yeah? <laughs> I will be spouse visa on a visit, all right? Can I apply for a student visa after you reach New Zealand? Okay, absolutely, Mevan. Uh, there is no uh, law or rule which says you cannot convert your visitor visa to a student visa. Uh, you definitely can do it. Uh, in fact, we have had a few clients in the past who had, uh, arrived into New Zealand on a uh, visitor visa and then came into our office or spoke to us and said, hey, look, I like New Zealand and I particularly went to this institution and I like this particular course and I would like to, uh, you know, take up this course. Can you help me to convert my visit visa into a, a student visa? And we did that. So definitely possible, uh, Mevan. So if you're coming here and you want to consider becoming a student, uh, give us a call. Uh, we have a toll-free number here in New Zealand. Uh, it's uh, 0800 or 0800 as we call it here. Uh, 696977. So that's our number. So if you uh, you know are in New Zealand, uh, give us a call on this uh, toll free number. Toll free meaning you don't have to pay for it. So you could pretty much use any number anywhere uh, uh, in uh, New Zealand, even a pay phone on the street uh, if you don't have a cell phone of New So give us a call and we'll be happy to help you. But to answer your question, yes, you can convert your uh, visitor visa into a student visa. <clears throat> Shaz Ali, I have completed Bachelor in Electronics and Communication, currently working in Dubai as per, as sales uh, technical engineer in the field of cybersecurity. Would like to do a master's in the field of cybersecurity and continue working in New Zealand say, in the same field. What are the chances? What are the scope of opportunity for cybersecurity in New Zealand? Excellent, Shaz. That's the one single word I can use. Excellent scope for cybersecurity. In fact, uh, you know, I uh, recently was talking to somebody from one of the institutions we work with here in New Zealand, and uh, he was talking about how much of a demand there is for cybersecurity professionals. And New Zealand is uh, kind of, you know, we like to uh, develop our soft power, so we are not people who will build big dams and large plant, you know, factories and stuff like that. We we're building our soft power, and that means uh, we are focusing on information technology on creative industry and biotechnology uh, and those kinds of areas. In fact, they're called our identified future growth areas and cyber 
security is, I think, going to be a massive one for us because New Zealand, uh, you know, uh, as a country, is also quite innovative, and uh, for cyber security, I think a lot of innovative thinking is required because uh, you know the cyber criminals are always being very innovative. So to outsmart them, the cyber security professionals need to be even more smarter. And I think this country provides that kind of an environment to to just be free and and let your uh, you know mind do its actual thing. So I think you'll do really well, especially with the kind of background you already have. Please get in touch with us. Uh, go to our website, ajvglobal.com, and uh, connect with us. Send us an email or connect with me on Facebook. Uh, send me an inbox message, and we will get in touch with you. And we'll be delighted to work with you because you are the kind of people we want here in New Zealand. Because, uh, as I told you, we have a pretty long, uh, you know, long-term skills uh, shortage here in New Zealand, and one of them is information technology. So yeah, I think you'll do really, really well here. All right, Chess, and we can suggest some really good courses to you as well. All right. And you finish the master's, you'll get a three years post-study work with I, I can already see you picking up a job and, you know, going on to become a future resident and uh, citizen of New Zealand. All right, cool. <clears throat> Nizar Ahmad says, what are the opportunities for construction planning engineers in New Zealand? Very good. Again, the country is growing very rapidly. Construction is happening in pretty much every city. Uh, little cities are also growing quite dramatically. So there's always going to be a, a, a you know, demand for people in the construction, especially planning engineers and so on and so forth. Okay, cool. Okay, for uh, here, uh, back to Ramandeep, my team, uh, my colleague Tulika tells me that uh, his, your loan might take some time, Raman, and uh, so we may not be able to launch your uh, application by end of November anyway. So, yeah, wait for uh, the uh, offer from UC, but the only complication is by the time if your loan is processed in the name of AOT, the bank might do a bit of drama to change it to UC if you like it better. We'll play it by the year, see how it goes. But uh, yeah, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't get your offer from UC as well. And then we will see which suits you better. And if the bank is unwilling to change the uh, loan letter from AOT to your UC, well, I guess your decision will be made. But if they are willing to change, and if you prefer to go to uh, UC, we will certainly work with you and guide you along this path. All right? Cool. Okay, and uh, the other uh, suggestion Talika gives to us, uh, Raman, um, is that you'll need to start your process like now. So don't wait. Go ahead and start your loan process with AUT because, like I said, they're both equally good uh, uh, universities, so you don't have to worry too much about it. Cool. Last question. It says, Sayyid Qasim Abbas, how much job required to get PR after SMC job search visa? Okay, Sayyid, it's not how much job, but how much pay uh, in the job that you require. And as of now, it stands at $52,000 per annum. If you are able to get a pay of that uh, scale, uh, you will be uh, eligible. Of course, there are other uh, bits and pieces that also need to fit in now for the picture to emerge clearly. Um, that would incl include your level of what's the job you've taken up and so on and so forth. So, which is where you require a licensed immigration advisor. I had to do a quick plug. <laughs> but, you know, so like I said, we'll have to uh, ensure that, you know, that your application looks good. But the bottom line is you'll require $52,000 per annum as your thing. Okay, last one. Siddharth Upredi says, greetings. How's everybody? Like the new setup? Thank you, uh, Siddharth. It was, yeah, it was good fun to operate with the setup today. And uh, looks like my time is also up. Yes, it is actually. And uh, again, I forgot my wallet in the car because I was in a hurry to come in and Nickel, Nick was already a little upset with me that I wasn't here in time. Um, <clears throat> Okay, one more has come in, which says, Tristi Shah, he says, Hi, Arun, I tried to connect with the number provided to me to contact Mary Joseph. Good and creature, I'm looking forward for consultation on partner visa. Tristi, uh, uh, just send a text to Mary on 0226052615. I'll repeat that, 0226052615. That's Mary's direct number. Uh, send her a text or give her a call. Send her a text if she's, you know, 
up and about and not doing anything, although it's 8.30 in the night, she might, you know, if she's in a good mood, she might call you back and say hi to you anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, otherwise connect with her. She starts work at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and she's here at this office. Oh, but tomorrow she's actually going to Auckland. Uh, so she is going to Auckland um, uh, and she is actually presenting a seminar at one of the institutions. So, Shristi, could I suggest that you call Virginia and I can give you Virginia's number. Uh, actually, if you go to our website, you know, go to ajvglobal.com, go to the contact us page uh, uh, or you go to the team page uh, and there all our, all our names and numbers are there. So Virginia's number is also there. Uh, I might actually give it to you. Uh, and uh, uh, talk to Virginia. Virginia is uh, an ex-immigration officer uh, who worked with Immigration New Zealand for a very, very long time. And uh, she is currently working with us here at the Hamilton office. And she is also undergoing her course to be able to become a licensed immigration advisor. So, so she will not give you uh, any immigration advice because Virginia as of now, cannot give you advice unless long as she gets the license. But uh, she will collect all the information and discuss either with me or with Mary. And one of us will call you back and we will speak to you. So sorry about the fact that you were not able to connect with us. Uh, it happens, uh, uh, you know, rarely that we are not able to uh, connect with the clients who want to work with us. So sorry about that. But do connect with Virginia, and her number is. Uh, Zero two two five one six nine zero zero eight. So, okay, it's also on the website. Go to ajvglobal.com. Go to the team details and all our numbers are there as well. All right, all right, Shristi, or uh, send me a text on my number, which is listed on uh, the website again. And you know, once I get back home, I might be able to give you a call. All right, cool. That's pretty much it for today. And so, yeah, you know, every day I forgot my. I was just saying I forgot my wallet in the car, and that's why. I didn't have my license uh, card, so I had to keep using my big license from the wall. And I also forgot my little teeny weeny bell that I ring to say time's up and I will uh, have to go now. But uh, hey guys and girls, thank you so much for joining in today. And Nick, great job behind the camera, man. Yeah, I appreciate all the work you've done to set this up and try some new technology. So uh, thanks for bearing with us uh, if there were a few glitches. But uh, we enjoyed doing this and we hope to create more and more uh, wonderful videos, including these live sessions. Uh, we collected tons of amazing footage uh, during our recent trip to Wellington and Nelson. So we're also planning on doing a lot of other interesting videos uh, with the different universities and colleges and polytechnics. So yeah, we'll keep, keep, keep uh, checking the space uh, for more innovative and creative things coming from AJV. And in the meantime, if you're thinking New Zealand, Think AJV, give us a call and we will gladly help you uh, to come to New Zealand if you deserve to be here and with a big smile. All right, thanks guys. Kakiteano, which I'll see you later, and Pomari. Good night.